keeping it real Real's how we keep it Get ready for Eddie Set back and beat the Dean Show Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. You hear the term Islam, radical Islam, Muslim, terrorist. So I brought someone who doesn't only look like a Muslim, but he's a Muslim to answer this question. Peace be with you. Walaikum assalam How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. President from the IREF? Yeah, mashallah. Let's get, let's get right into it. Have you termed, this term is being thrown around constantly. Rad- say it took this beautiful word submit Islam, submission to the will of the creator true islam summed up in one word true. islam true. to acquire peace by doing what jesus did moses did abraham and all the messengers of god submit your will entirely to the creator of the heavens and earth and that's how you get peace from the owner of peace summed up with one word islam can you put radical in front of islam it's very absurd to do that because you already defined what is islam islam means peace or submitting in peace now to say radical Islam is like saying radical peace. And that sounds, it, it's just very absurd to use those words. Yeah, that, so that's like saying radical peace. How could it be radical Absolutely. peace? Absolutely. Yeah, so we take it just the same way. Could, would you say we don't say radical Christianity? Yes, of course, we shouldn't. No, that's... I mean, f- to, to put Christianity into the frame of radicalism is not just. Yeah. Because Christians, some of them, even if a majority of them do something wrong... Suppose if 95% of Christians become radicals, still you cannot call it radical Christianity because all the 95% hypothetically can be wrong, practicing wrong Christianity. So I mean a religion is to be judged by the scripture. A religion is to be judged by the person who introduced the scripture. So if I want to understand Christianity, I would look at Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him, his life, his teachings. The same way I would do with Moses, may peace be upon him. And the same way it has to be done with Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And if someone is to quote out of context, you can do it from everywhere. You can do it from the religious scholars, from the scripture. You can do it from the constitutions of the world. You can do it from the leaders and their speeches when they give it in interest of nationalism for national security. And you can just pick up a statement out of context to say that this guy is a radical. This guy is an extremist. This guy is a terrorist. And without a second thought, there may be so many out of context quotes that can be picked up to prove that Trump is a terrorist. And I don't think that's right to do. That's not right to do. Now, you, you see this happening. You see a, such a, a beautiful way of life, you know, this whole concept, this whole religion. And I said, look, I, I have someone who not only looks like a Muslim, is a Muslim. And how do I mean, a, a Muslim doesn't necessarily look like... Praise ha- be to Allah. For praise that. be to God. Yeah. A Muslim is simply one who submits to the will of God. So he could be Chinese. You're yeah. actually from where are you from? I'm from India. India. From Hyderabad. Yeah, but not all Muslims are from from India, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, S- same thing. You, you're looking at m- myself here. Um, so we have um, yourself, myself, Muslim, and I'm saying come to the Muslims to learn about Islam. What people are propagating, some people, there are a lot of great people out there who see sure. past this. They right, see sure. past, you know, this smoke screen, this, this um, nonsense that's been put out there. But what people are trying to uh, propagate, some many of the haters because Islamophobia is a quarter of a million plus annual business. People are making money throwing dirt on Islam. I know. So what do you say when people are saying, no, no, Islam is what actually makes people, turns people into, you know, there's this, there's this version of Islam, this part of Islam that makes people radical. What do you have to say to that? (coughs) Basically, uh, I did, if you have uh, heard about, a report that was published in Times Magazine that was in 16th April 1979 and the report it said that 60,000 books were written against Islam and what was the time period from the time period 1800 to 1950 so it's like beginning 19th century till the mid of 20th century now if you just calculate that it would mean 60,000 60, 60,000 books that would mean more than one book was published against Islam per day in that period of 150 years. And where was it published? It was mostly published in the Western community. So unfortunately, the innocent people of the Western world, the common population, the common citizen, the layman here, when he learnt Islam, he learnt it through these books. So now that Islamophobia is a reaction to the dishonest propaganda that was done through these books, 
to defame Islam, to malign Islam. Because the think tanks of the time, these literature writers, they knew that if there can be any challenge to their stupid behavior in the society of fooling the masses, enslaving them economically, again bringing them back as their own slaves to do what they wish to do of a very unjust capitalist economy, the only challenge could be Islam. So before Islam could reach through scriptures, before Muslims could represent Islam in this beautiful world, they made sure that the masses here are already ignorant about Islam or have a wrong judgment about Islam. And that is how you find the Islamophobia growing here. And that's not stopping. There are so many other books still written. Let's go to this clip. There is a gentleman who's out there and he seems to be like a self proclaim scholar of Islam, an expert of Islam, and we're going to see what you have to say. Let's go to this clip. I am not a Muslim. I'm not any religion at all. Uh -huh. But it bothered me when you were talking about Islam being not a religion of peace. Um, uh -huh. Muhammad was a very peaceful man. No, he wasn't. Yes, well, he no, yes. No. and he had a great respect no. For women, his okay, wives we, were um, given a great deal of power over him. And have you been reading like, Karen Armstrong? Is that where, where is the no, from? Not, no, I've read. Uh, he's not. He was a conquering warlord who spread the faith with the sword quite successfully. So you can see he's uh, the woman who's. She doesn't seem like she belongs to any religion, but she's saying that Prophet Muhammad was a peaceful man. And then he questions, what, did you listen to Karen Armstrong, who's an academic, you know, well-researched historian? And there's, there's a great, uh, that's a great reference point also for someone who wants to, to know more of the history. And it looks like she did her homework, but then he talks about, you know, uh, the problem Muhammad, peace be upon him, being a, a warlord. And what, what, how would you respond to him? See, basically, as far as this guy is concerned, I am very sure he has ever tried to read the Quran or the history of Islam from the right sources. And I don't know, I mean listening to him, it's nothing new that I am listening. Being in this field, we have been listening a lot of debaters, a lot of critics of Islam, cynics of Islam, a lot of anti-Islamic politicians uh, running their show or running their business. And in our time, the easiest way to become popular is speak against Islam and Muslims and you have the whole media begging you for that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the mainstream media, not the whole media, because this itself, Din Show, is a media source. So I would not blame whole media. But still, the mainstream media generally backs the person who speaks against Islam very easily. So this guy is getting that publicity. That's what I feel. And I'm very sure he has not sat down properly with real uh, type Muslims that who should counter him in the right perspective. And as far as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, radicalizing or something is concerned, you know, I mean, the great people in the line of Karen Armstrong in our contemporary times, you look at Bernard Shaw, you look at Gandhi, who was our freedom national hero. That's a good point. Gandhi. Gandhi ji. Yeah. Yeah. In right, the young yeah. India back in 1920, he says that it's very absurd to believe that Islam was spread by sword. He starts praising Prophet Muhammad for his characters, for his morals. And he says the way he had devoted his life towards his people and his self-sacrifice, his striving towards his goal and his mission without a compromise. And the way the people around him, they devoted themselves to him. So Gandhiji, he says, this was the main power of Islam and not the sword at all. You look at Thomas Carlyle in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. I mean, these are historians who have studied history. This guy, I'm very sure what history has he studied. Once he says, I'm an atheist, somewhere he goes on to support Jesus. And now he is being a bigotry. I mean, on one side, he's talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He doesn't understand that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he came, how many wars did he participate in? How many people did he kill by his sword? He doesn't even know that historically, the sword of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it killed only one enemy. Can you imagine that? How many wars did he participate in? How many people were killed? A lot of wars that took place at the time of Prophet Muhammad have a background to it. Yeah. And those backgrounds 
I'm a very sure this guy has never studied. Talk, talk real before we go to break. Uh, d- uh, someone might say, "What do you mean? Just one, one?" Uh, you you said that only one person was killed by his sword. Yes, elaborate of course. on this. I mean, see, if a battle is fought, and if he is a person who is too interested to be violent and kill enemies, he should have killed hundreds of them, thousands of them. Yeah. But then you what? find that only one person is killed through his sword. That means he is not a war lord. But as Quran testifies about Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Allah testifies in the Quran in Surah Anbiya, Surah number twenty-one, Ayat number nine and seven. Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatul lil alamin. We did not send you, but as a mercy to the entire universe. And mercy is that the people who are innocent should be given mercy and forgiveness, and the people who are criminals shall be dealt with justice. So now, if some criminal is being dealt with justice, that is not being a war lord. If American national security is defended by attacking the enemies of America by going for war with the enemies of America. You are not going to call that Americans are warlords. You are going to say they are defending their national security. And if it is done in the just cause, then it's a just war. Yeah. So that is how the history of Islam goes with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His wars were just wars. And look at the teachings. You study polymology. The subject in which you study about wars, and you come to understand that there are different categories of wars, and all the wars that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought were just wars. Just wars. Yes. It wasn't like he was going picking on people. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, this is what the Karen Armstrong. Uh, you she even te- yeah. That historian, they yes. testify. Gandhi. That's interesting about Gandhi. We're going to go to break, but he after he was finished reading the biography of Prophet Muhammad, he was sad. He was. Yes. He, what, he was. It He's made it, why would he? That's. I mean, for the intellectual thinking about, he was known for his nonviolent protest. Absolutely. Why would he be sad? And why would he be talking Absolutely. about in uh, uh, someone uh, praising a violent warlord? No, May Allah forbid. Doesn't make it sense. Doesn't, doesn't make sense. But we're making sense of it all through truth. Because you're talking, you're getting to know the Muslims make the human connection. We'll be right back with more God willing. Don't go anywhere. And another common thing is that it's religion. So this atheist who's out there. Yeah, you mean and, yeah, Sam Harris? The likes. Yeah. yeah. They, they forget about all of the you know, wars that were done you know, by uh, people who are supposed to communist atheists. And you can talk about the millions, massive of people who are killed. But what do you say to this question when people ask? Yeah, the, I mean, religions the, are the start yeah, of all I'm very, I'm very surprised that a lot of educated people who are with good academic background, even they have this misconception. They think that religion is the main sole source for all the wars in the world, for all the chaos in the world. But as I told you, polymology is the study about wars. Now, when you study that, the top five wars in the name of religion, they start the top the top of the line. They say it's the war that was fought in the Holy Roman Empire. And that was that is known in the world today as the 30 Years War between 1618 to 1638. So this was the war, they say, which was a 30 years war and this was fought in the name of religion. The second is the French Holy War. The third is the Crusades. And the, the fourth is the Sudanese civil war. The fifth is the Lebanese civil war. So of the top wars, according to the experts studying wars, they say in the name of religion in the world, these are the top five wars. What do I mean by top five wars? So they say based on the loss of human lives, these are the top five wars. And the lowest estimate of the people killed in these top five wars in the name of religion in human history they say it is 7 million, 7 million people killed. That is the lowest estimate. And the highest estimate is 20.7 million people killed. I say, man, okay, that's fine. Five wars in the name of religion, the topmost wars. And how many people, according to your highest estimate, is 20.7 million? Okay, let's come to some wars that were not fought in the name of religion. To begin with, World War One, It was not in the name of religion. Who fought it? No Muslim involved there. There is no jihad in it. There is no Quran involved. There is no slogan called Allahu Akbar in World War One. How many people killed? According to one estimate, about 21 million people. According to another estimate, it may be more than 30 million people. What about World War Two? The number of human lives lost in World War Two are recorded in the Guinness Book of World Record. How many? 50 million human lives, innocent human lives. This is minus the soldiers losing their lives. Who fought it? Muslims? No, no Muslim country was involved in it. Mm-hmm. No Muslim country initiated it. 
there was no sole interest of Islam or Jihad in it. What about the Russian civil war? How many Jews were killed in it? Millions of Jews. What about the pogrom which started in Russia, in Kazakhstan? A pogrom is a term, a Russian term used when innocent Jews were killed in riots. What about the Kalinshad city of Germany where 91 Jews were killed? 7,000 synagogues were burned down. Can you imagine that? And who was burning them down? Who? Uh, that is my question. The Muslims were doing it. No, you people were doing it. And they were not religious people, the atheists. What about the French Revolution? So these were considered atheists. These yes, were absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no religion. What, what, what about the French Revolution? It was not in the name of religion. It was against religion. I mean, so many Christians were prosecuted in it. So many churches were pulled down. So many cross signs were pulled down. It was a crime to show a cross sign in France in time. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying all this was done by atheists. How many people did you kill? Not in the name of religion, but in the name of materialistic world. Albania. In Albania, in Albania, you find that this country for the past about 100 years was ruled by a communist regime. And article 37 of Albania, it says, it's a country that promotes atheism for a progressive world. And we all know what happened in Albania. How many innocent lives were killed in Albania. But nobody talks about it. This was not in the name of religion. The war in Vietnam did not happen in the name of religion. Vietnam. Yeah, it was not in the name of religion, the Vietnam War. And what about the war that took place when Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed? Was it religion involved? No. And what happened in Iraq in 2003? We all know. If you hear the present Trump administration has selected Michael Flynn as the national security advisor for Mr. Trump. And Michael Flynn was the chief of Pentagon for about two years. And he was into intelligence services in the army. And on a public interview platform, he says, he admits, it was a big blunder. Big blunder invading Iraq in 2003. What about Nixon? Nixon is the person who has interviewed Saddam Hussein several times under US Army. He was a former CIA officer and he has come up with his book now. He has written an, a whole book and his discussions with Saddam Hussein. He says it was a very serious error. I mean, you attack a country, you destroy a country, its population, you displace the whole system existing there, you kill millions of people there. I'm asking, did America do this in the name of religion? Absolutely not. So this is all not done in the name of religion. So don't blame religion for all this stuff. Religion, very less. This is what polymology study says. Mm -hmm. You look at all these events and you'll find that it were not Muslims involved. It was not jihad. Neither was any other religion involved. These were done by those people who did not actually support religion or believe in a religion. That's a problem. Yeah. What do you think? You mentioned Michael Flynn who was appointed yeah. by uh, the new uh, Trump upcoming, yes, yeah, new president. upcoming president. What do you think now with the new president, Donald Trump, and this individual who he appointed, who is quoted as saying... It's like cancer. I've gone through cancer in my own life. Okay, so it's like cancer. Islam is a cancer. Yeah, I understand. See, basically, why did this happen? Because most of the time when you hear these people... They have some personal experiences. Flynn, he very clearly says that he has interviewed a lot of terrorists from Taliban and Al-Qaeda on the public uh, media platform there. When he was interviewed on the public media platform, he has been very honest to say that he has done this. And when he was again and again asked by the anchor, do you believe that Islam is a radical religion? Then he says, it's, it was in a context to say that if the people who are terrorists derive a teaching from Islam, from the Holy Scripture. So in that sense, Islam is radical. So I don't blame Flynn for all this, but definitely a person of his reputation, a person of his caliber should not have spoken those words. That's not very fair on his part to do that. But then I always feel there is some lacune in our community, the Muslim community, our representatives, they should have met him, they should have spoken to him, discussed with him. And as far as Trump is concerned, you see, no man on earth can do you good or harm you unless and until the Almighty God, Allah doesn't have a will that it happens to you. This is what Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3, Ayat number 160. Allah says, let the believers put complete trust in Allah. If Allah wills to harm you, there is none who can prevent the harm 
from reaching you. If Allah wants to benefit you, there is none who can stop the benefit from reaching you. So the believers, we put our trust in Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what is the message on the dollar, the US dollar. In God, we trust. And I'm very sure, Trump, he already said in his public speeches, that he is a practicing Christian. He believes in Christianity. So a person who believes in Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, who is the Prince of Peace, will not absolutely do anything which will harm innocent lives as has been happening in the past few decades. I am very sure. Let's have a positive hope for him. And this I am not saying because I am in America right now or because Trump has become the president. My concept has always been if there is somebody who is very anti-Islamic in his propaganda, let's go to him. Let's talk to him. And now that he has become the president of America, as a Muslim's belief, we believe that this is because Allah willed so. This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the Muslims put all the trust in Allah. Let us have good hopes from Trump. And trust me, personally I feel, personally I feel that inshallah, by Allah's will, Trump will not harm the Muslim community, but something good is going to come out in the future inshallah, which was not happening earlier. And what Trump was speaking Either it was something, a political agenda to come into power or maybe he did not have the proper information about Islam in the right perspective. Once he gets that through the right people, through the right sources, the things will change. And I have good hope in the American system for that, inshallah, in the coming days. I think we should pray for Trump. What do you think? 100%. We should pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu prayed for Abu Jahl and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And we shall also pray for Trump, for every non-Muslim we pray, Alhamdulillah, we pray, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide them to your chosen path. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I would not say convert them to Islam. I would say, oh Allah, guide them to your chosen path. Oh Almighty God, guide them to the chosen path. And for me, that chosen path is Islam. And I'm very sure, I really pray from my bottom of the heart that, oh Allah, guide Trump to the chosen path of Islam. The path that Jesus followed, the path that Moses, may peace be upon him, followed, the path that all prophets since the time of Adam, may peace be upon him, followed, till Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, and the same path that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to complete the teachings through the Quran, as Allah testifies in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 3, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu neymati wa atmamtu alaykum neymati wa raditu lakum al-Islam ad On this day, we have completed for you your religion, completed our favors upon you, and chosen for you Islam, meaning the way of peaceful submission as the way that Allah will accept on day of judgment. So I yeah. truly pray for Trump for that. We're, we're going to, let me get one more question in. And, and that just shows you, I mean, if, if we're people of hate, I mean, why all the love now? Because when you want the best for someone, look, you pray for him. So we are people giving this great advice to the Muslims to pray for this man, that he does the right things, that he's just, that he's fair, that God Almighty guides him. And that's, Hundred percent, inshallah. That out of the love. Now, uh, real quick, uh, before we go, we're out of time. People see the Middle East, and that's where all the conflict, you know, is happening. And the Muslim majority countries are upside down. They attribute this, you know, that's why Muslims are backward. It's Islam is backward. It's violent. Uh, what would you say? See, basically, uh, Eddie. To begin with, uh, I wanted to add one more point before I concluded the last part of the answer. There is a very major misconception that American population has a majority of the atheists. That's not true. The government system is not an atheist government system. The very statement of the dollar, in God we trust, is an indication that the system itself believes in a God. It is the duty of the Muslims living in America to introduce the true God to them. There is no God but Allah. That is the message that we need to introduce to them. We need to introduce to them that Muhammad Wasallam is the messenger to humanity, to entire universe. Muhammad Rasulullah, he is the messenger not for me alone, to the Muslims alone, but to mankind. Now when you say Allah, many people they are like, what, Allah? What? But then Jesus say, Allah, huh? isn't it something Absolutely. in the Christian uh, Christians and uh, Jews who's Arabic speaking, they were, use the word Allah? In Encyclopedia Britannica, it says that the most convenient word that the Jews and Christians, who were Coptic Jews and Christians, Arab Jews and Christians, <coughs> used for Almighty God was only Allah. They had no other option for that. Would this be like the Christian, uh, so they can like understand better? This is like the uh, the Father, like for we don't say that, yeah. But for them, like 
You know, they yeah, had, they had mean, the, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Well, this is the, the, the God. This the is Almighty the Almighty God. The Almighty God. Almighty they God. would say the Father. The Father. They I would mean, say that. Yeah, I, I, they would in say the that. time of Jesus that. Christ and Moses, may peace be upon him, the Father was a common term used by a lot of people to refer to the Almighty God. Yeah. And it was never in the literal sense. Yeah. So in that sense... We don't say it because it's been taken as a literal yes, sense. They, right, absolutely. Islam changed it to from Abbana, it became Rabbana in Islam. So we say Lord now. What our Lord. Rabbana. Our Lord. Our, our Lord. Lord. Yeah. So from our Father, it became our... In Arabic, it is Abbana, our father. So Allah made it Rabbana, no more Abbana, only Rabbana. Now. Because of all the confusion all the with confusions. Jesus being Absolutely. his literal son Absolutely. and God having children. Absolutely. And do you know the Gallup survey? Gallup is a big survey organization in the United States of America. The Gallup survey for 2016, it says 81% Americans adhere to religion. One or the other religion. 81%. Meaning... The people in America believe in religion. They are not atheists. So it's a wrong propaganda outside or a wrong belief outside that there is a vast majority of people who don't believe in a religion. That's, that isn't true. That is what Gallup survey says. Then coming to the other point, the Gallup made an extensive survey in 32 Muslim countries and it came out with a result that 93% of the Muslims in these 32 Muslim countries, they condemned, they rejected 9-11. And they condemned every form of suicide bombing. From Quran, there is no way of supporting suicide bombing. It is the only religious scripture where Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 29, Do not kill your own life with your own hands. Meaning, do not commit suicide. No other religious scripture has an equivalent statement. Allah says you cannot commit suicide. So forget suicide bombing. Every form of suicide bombing in Islam is haram. And what is referred as Salafiist scholars of Saudi Arabia. If you go to the top of the line of the scholars, Sheikh bin Baz, who was the Grand Mufti for a very long time. You talk about Nasiruddin Albani. You talk about Usaymin, Sheikh Usaymin in Saudi Arabia. The three topmost of the line, they strongly condemned suicide bombing. These three scholars, they have given fatwa on more than 72 pages saying that Usama bin Laden and his likes are terrorists. Mm -hmm. There is no way they have supported this. When it comes to Middle East problems, Robert Pape, when he was studying, Robert Pape has written a book by the name Dying to Win. He's an expert now, an He's academic, an expert. terrorist He's an expert. academic. He's yeah. a terrorist expert, especially in suicide bombing. He has written a book, The Dying to Win, and it's a central research book on suicide bombing for agencies to study. He says out of the 315 completed suicide bombings from 1980 to 2005, more than 90% were committed only against foreign occupation as the reason. So this is the root cause now. This he is talks the root about. cause. He says the root cause of suicide bombing is If you want to know the religion. root cause, why these people are doing yes. something that Islam also condemns. So the expert on suicide bombing yes. says in his study he has come across that more than 90% of the suicide bombings were committed not in the name of religion but as a result of foreign occupation on their territory, on their country or on their land. This is yeah. what he says. And then he continues to say more than 50% of the suicide bombings were not committed by Muslims they were committed by non-Muslim groups like LTTE like the IRA Irish Republican Army which is a strong Christian background army and the PK group of Turkey which is a socialist communist group and not a religious group these are the three most committing suicide bombings in the world the Timo Tigers are they also a part of this uh, LTTE of course LTTE they are yeah, the, LTTE, the, the Tiger okay, yeah. Tigers they are yeah. the ones LTTE yeah so they're a secular secular group they're a secular group PKK with is a secular group absolutely, from Turkey they're absolutely. all secular and if you find individually you will find in LTTE a lot of the people who say we are Hindus but I know Hinduism of course does not promote violence in this form of suicide bombing absolutely yeah. not yeah so these people they are not Muslims. Mm -hmm. And this is what Robert Pape says. And the other astonishing uh, thing that has been found out on American soil by Gallup survey and other surveys that by the FBI. The report says from since 9-11 till date, the Muslims were involved only in 6% of terrorist attacks. 5% mm -hmm. by the communists. 7% by the Jews. 43% and 24% by the Latinos and the white supremacist groups. Yeah. So where did the Muslims do it? Mm -hmm. Even on the American soil. So what's happening in the Middle East, we all know. 
who started the problem from where did it start when it comes to isis isis i think this is the first time ever in the recent past you saw all the muslim scholars from all muslim groups coming together unanimously condemning isis saying they have nothing to do with islam and we have been very very vocal about it when you meet a non muslim on the road no you should speak about it where does he want us to speak put a earphone in his on his ears and say look isis is a terrorist or what do you expect we have been doing it so many scholars have done it on the mainstream channels they have done it nobody has ever supported isis isis is a bloody terrorist organization i said don't call it an islamic state call it an insane state of iraq and syria it has nothing to do with islam it is an open condemnation given to them so the problem there how did it happen michael flynn again on the public platform he admits he admits that isil was not a creation by its own but it was a result of some other thing he there are intelligence experts from cia and pentagon who had earlier said that the abu ghari prisons in iraq they worked as the university of terrorism it's not the muslim saying this so but then why is it that people don't count on this we say america is popular in the world for its justice system people love america and i have been to america this is my fifth visit to america the first time i came here i was called by the us state department i have was apprehensive to come to america but once i came here meeting the people here i always tell him in public talks i have never never met people more kind than the american population the non muslim population of america the common population they are lovely people the thing is we need to reach out to them to give the right message and they need to understand that islam is not a threat to them there are millions of muslims living in america out of the millions how many may be terrorists not even 100 not even 100 can you imagine that figure potential terrorists on the basis of potential terrorists you can't keep arresting every innocent person and the conviction rate if you look at the conviction rate in the uk only only 12% of the people who are arrested for terrorism charges were convicted mm -hmm. not more than 12% meaning in other words 88% were left by the court their cases were dismissed there were no charges on them of terrorism just because they were not involved in it but what about they getting arrested and being publicized as terrorists only because you felt they were a terrorist so you made them a terrorist in other words now yeah well we got a lot of things clear cleared up it's not the islamic state it's the insane what you say the insane state of insane iraq and syria insane state and we also uh, quoted the terrorist expert dr pape we talked about if you want to know why these rat these these terrorists are being created they're not being created by islam absolutely when you not. bomb people up from 40,000 feet up 10,000 miles away no way no you way kill people in the weddings they're hanging out what would you no. i mean you 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 you're going to end up producing these mad insane individuals again islam condemns it is not condoned by islam it's condemned but we can see the root cause see, unfortunate part edi along with this is that a lot of people have started thing the muslims because they are afraid against the system the system might do something to them therefore they are condemning terrorism i swear by allah i swear by allah the muslims doesn't do that maybe few people do that way but as a whole this is the book we read how can we after reading a book which says you cannot kill an innocent life even think of killing innocent people after the quran the muslims give first preference to sahih bukhari the book which has the compilation of the teachings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you read sahih al bukhari volume number 4 3 hadith number 3014 to 3016 and sahih muslim volume number 5 hadith number 4547 and 4548 the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the battlefield you will not touch women and children is this terrorism is this the statement of a warlord nausbilla the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in sahih muslim Volume number five, hadith number four thousand five hundred forty-one and four thousand five hundred forty-two, narrated by Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her, his beloved wife. She said, "The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, 'Never wish to initiate a war, but if the war is imposed upon you, then don't turn your back.' The Prophet is saying, 'Don't initiate a war.' Is this the statement of a warlord? No. I no. say, man, you are insane. You are a cynic. You are a critic who needs some treatment, some psychological treatment." 
All right, that's it for this episode of The Dean Show. It doesn't stop there. If you still have some questions, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. Remember, we're here every week for you trying to answer those questions, those misconceptions. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd like to thank you for being on The Dean thank Show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jazakallah. And we started with peace. And we end with peace. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. This is